Hello, good morning everyone, Rich Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the Nikon Z30. This is the APS-C mirrorless camera from Nikon that is mainly designed for vlogging. So I thought we should start the video by coming out and shoot a bit of vlogging style video using this camera. So right now I'm holding the Nikon Z30 using it to shoot this video and using the face detection autofocus, not using any gimbal, just hand holding the camera and using the kit lens which is the 16 to 50 VR lens. So the camera does not have the in-body image stabilizer but the kit lens does have VR so it provides optical image stabilization and I find the result is okay. If you want to have the footage more steady then you can turn on the electronic image stabilization but that would result in a bit of cropping. The camera does not have the headphone jet, but it does have the input for external microphone. So right now, I'm using my Synco D30 microphone to record audio. But if you don't want to carry around external microphone, you could just use the built-in microphone. And the camera does have a dual stereo built-in microphone at the top of the camera. So let me switch over to use the built-in microphone to record audio now. Okay, I'll just switch over to use the built-in microphone to record audio. Audio quality is definitely not as good as if you use the external microphone but I find overall for most situations it is pretty acceptable. The only thing that you have to watch out is wind noise when you are shooting outdoor but I know Small Rig has released a optional accessories which is a wind muff that can clip onto the hot shoe mount. Unfortunately, I don't have one to test it but it looks like a pretty cool accessories and very affordable too. So if you are looking at buying a Z30, you definitely should check it out. There are quite a few features on this Z30 that make this camera suitable for shooting video, especially vlogging video. I can't remember how many times in the past when I was shooting some vlogging video that I thought I was recording video but actually I didn't trigger the start recording correctly so in the end I didn't have the footage that I thought I have recorded but now with this red teddy lamp in the front I can see it very clearly so this sort of mistakes really shouldn't happen again if I'm shooting any kind of vlogging video with this Z30. Okay, now let's head back to my home and we can continue and talk more about this camera and I will show you some of my test results as well. Okay, now we are back to my home and let's continue the review. So for the rest of the review, I'm also going to use the Z30 to shoot the video and the camera is in autofocus AFF mode using face detection. Now let's have a closer look at the Nikon Z30. I have mentioned at the beginning, the camera is mainly designed for vloggers, but actually it's not just for vloggers. It could be for someone who want to create a YouTube channel or maybe do some TikTok video or live streaming. Basically any kind of video content creator who want a camera that is better than the smartphone, but still easy to carry around, also easy to use. So this Nikon Z30 is the smallest z mirror mirrorless camera Nikon has ever created. It is also the cheapest Z camera because Nikon is targeting this camera towards the entry level users, people who are just starting or just don't want to spend a lot of money. In a lot of ways, this camera is very similar to the ZFC or Z50 as it reuses quite a few components as well. I know some of you would think, oh, it's just reusing the same sensor and other things, but I think this is something that every manufacturer would do more and more often. It's just not financially feasible for the manufacturer to release a new sensor or some really brand new technology with every new camera, especially a lower end camera like this Nikon Z30. However, there are still quite a few big differences between the Z30 and the ZFC and the Z50. First, the Z30 doesn't have an electronic viewfinder. This is the first Nikon Z camera that doesn't have one. The advantage of not having an electronic viewfinder is that the camera is a lot more compact than the Z50 and the ZFC, which are already pretty small cameras. Look at the size of the camera with the 16 to 50 kit lens. It is a very compact setup. 
Now the disadvantage, well, you don't have the electronic viewfinder and there isn't any optional electronic viewfinder that you can buy and clip onto the camera. Now, is this really a problem? Well, to be honest, there were quite a few times when I was shooting outdoors and it was a really sunny day and I wish the camera has an EVF so that I can see the composition and preview what I'm shooting clearly. But then I'm someone who grew up with SLR, DSLR, rangefinder cameras and even these days I still use the EVF with my mirrors cameras a lot. So I'm probably not the type of user Nikon designed this camera for. It is mainly designed for user who usually take photos and video with smartphones. So not having a EVF shouldn't really be a big problem at all. But at the same time, I do really appreciate the smaller size of the Z30. It is kind of pocketable. I say kind of because I can fit it into my jacket's large pocket, but if I have a smaller pocket, then it probably wouldn't fit or barely fit in. Because this camera is mainly designed for video content creator, it has a fully articulated screen so you can see yourself when you are shooting video of yourself. When you flip out the screen and have the screen pointing forward, the camera would turn it into the self portrait mode which means all the buttons and dials on the camera apart from the shutter and the record buttons are disabled. The reason is that you will be grabbing the camera in the reverse angle so it is very easy for you to press some buttons or turn some dials by mistake and change some of the settings accidentally. So Nikon just automatically disable all those controls when it detect the screen is facing forward so I think that is quite a nice design. But if you are a very careful person and you don't really want to disable all those buttons and dials, even when you are flipping the screen towards the front, you can disable the self-portrait mode from the camera's setup menu screen. Speaking of buttons and dials, despite this is an entry model camera, there are still quite a lot of buttons and dials on the camera, including the front and rear control dial. Compare it to the Nikon Z6 and Z7, the only thing that is really missing is the little joystick at the back. A lot of the controls are customizable as well, so for the more advanced users, you could use the camera just like a high-end Z camera, which makes it great for people who already has a Z6 or 7 or even Z9 but want a smaller camera as a second camera. One thing I really like about the Z30 is that even though it is a compact camera, it still has a decent size camera grip. Holding and shooting with the Z30 is very comfortable even with just one hand. I don't feel the camera would suddenly drop off from my hand at all. And even when I hold the camera in the opposite direction, so the front of the camera is facing me, the grip help push the bottom of my thumb and it make it fairly comfortable to hold. The weight of the Z30 itself is just about 350 gram and the 16 to 50 kit lens is also very lightweight. So together, this combo is one of the lightest mirrorless cameras that I've used for a while. Even when I was shooting some vlogging video with the Z30, my hand just doesn't get tired easily at all. In terms of build quality, it is pretty good and feels reasonably solid. I do find the battery door feels a little bit flimsy and the two small function button at the front doesn't feel quite as nice as the rest of the camera. But other than these two minor things, the camera feels nice overall and it is less plasticky than I expected for a camera at this price. When you are shooting vlogging video, usually you will be just hand holding the camera and quite often you will also be walking around. So image stabilization is really important. Unfortunately, the Z30 doesn't have the in-body image stabilizer or IBIS. The 16 to 50 mm kit lens does have VR and it does a reasonably good job to keep the footage steady. But if you want to use another lens that doesn't have VR, maybe the Nikon Z14 to 30 f4 or 20 mm f1.8 or like the Vilchox 30 mm f1.4 or any of those really affordable ultra fast main focus lens from China, then you will have no physical image stabilization at all. Yes, there is electronic stabilization, but electronic stabilization has many limitations like it is only for the video mode and your shutter speed has to be quite fast. So it can't really replace a real physical image stabilization system. 
Now, to be fair, Nikon is not the only one that doesn't put a in-body image stabilization system on their small vlogging camera. Sony, Panasonic, Canon, they are all doing exactly the same thing. It's almost like all these companies had a board meeting together and agreed nobody's going to give us the perfect vlogging camera. I mentioned at the beginning that there is a tele lamp at the front of the camera. I believe this is the first Nikon camera that has a tele lamp and that is a really useful feature that is not just for vlogging but for creating any kind of video contents that you need to film yourself and there's no one there to help you so you can be confident that you are actually recording. The telelamp would also flash to tell you when you need to pay attention to something for example the memory card is getting full or the battery is about to die or the camera temperature is getting too hot. The camera has a 3.5mm microphone port micro HDMI output and a USB-C port on the side of the camera. I saw there are some complaints about the camera not having a headphone output port, even though it is mainly target as a vlogging camera. I'm not too sure if I would agree with these complaints. Now, don't get me wrong. I definitely don't mind if there is a headphone port and I do use headphone port to monitor audio quite often when I do my video work. But when I'm vlogging, well, I almost never use a headphone to check the audio when I'm vlogging because vlogging to me is really about shooting something casually and quickly and I don't really want to spend a lot of time to set up the camera. I would usually just use the audio level meter on the LCD screen to quickly check the audio level and I've almost never plugged in a headphone to check the audio when I'm vlogging. So I don't really think not having a headphone port is a big deal at all. But if you disagree with me and you do use headphones a lot when you are vlogging, feel free to drop a comment below and let me know. Speaking of using the audio level meter to check the audio, there is one pretty weird design decision that Nikon has made. If you flip the screen around so that it is facing forward, the audio level meter would disappear. I don't think this is a setting issue or at least I couldn't find a way to enable the audio level meter. It's just a bit weird that I can't check my audio level when I'm shooting vlogging style video when the camera is mainly designed for vlogging. It should be an easy thing for Nikon to change that if Nikon want to do that. So hopefully in the future, Nikon will release a new firmware which allow us to see the audio level meter even when the screen is facing forward. As a camera that is mainly targeting video content creators, the Z30 is probably the most video-oriented interchangeable lens camera from Nikon. So now let's have a look at the video features and performance of the Z30. The Z30 can capture 4K video up to 30 frames per second with no crop. While it's nothing crazy like the Z9 that can do 8K raw video, for an entry-level APS-C camera, 4K30 with no crop is pretty good. The quality of the 4K video is also very nice, very sharp, and I don't see much artifact at all. There's no 10-bit or log profile available, so the best you can do to preserve a bit more of dynamic range is to shoot in flat picture profile. Let's look at this 4K footage that I shoot on a rainy night. Even at ISO 1600, the image quality remains very good. You can see the raindrop near the street light and the shadow area remains clean. At ISO 3200, there is a bit more noise at the shadow area, but otherwise the image quality still remains very good. Even when I go up to ISO 6400, the image quality is still decent. At ISO 12800, you can see there are quite a lot of noise now. The maximum ISO we can use when shooting 4K video is 25600, which is quite noisy, but surprisingly, it still managed to maintain good amount of details and color information. Previously, the ZFC and the Z50 both have a 30 minutes time limit when you are recording video. The Z30 has a much longer 125 minutes recording limit. It doesn't mean the camera can actually record 125 minutes non-stop as it is a pretty compact camera so there are two limitations. One is the relatively small battery and the second is that you could overheat because, well, it is a small camera with no active cooling. 
For the small battery, it is easy to work around as you could either just get more batteries or you could power the camera using the USB-C port. Yes, the USB-C port on the Z30 can be used to power the camera as well as charging the battery. So I did a test and see how long could I record the 4K30 video before the camera would overheat while using an external USB power source to make the battery last longer. I tested in this room here and the ambient temperature was around 18 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Not exactly a hot day, but not exactly cold either. And end up I managed to record 100 minutes of 4K 30 video and the camera still hasn't overheat and no sign of overheating. I stopped the recording after that because 100 minutes continuously is really long enough for most users and the camera I used to record this test, the battery is about to die and almost fill up the memory card as well. Now of course, if you are shooting on a day that is much hotter, then your result may differ and I wouldn't be surprised if the Z30 would overheat much faster. If you want to shoot a bit of slow motion b-roll for your vlogging video, the Z30 can capture 120 frames per second video at 1080p resolution. The 1080p footage is definitely not as sharp or detailed when compared to the 4K video, but at least there is also no crop even when recording at 120fps and the 120fps 1080p video quality appears to be identical to the 1080p video shoot at the normal 24 to 30 frames per second frame rate. That surprised me a little bit as I thought the 120 frame per second video would be of lower quality or at least there would be a little bit of cropping, but nope, none of these limitations, so that's pretty good. If you install the Nikon webcam utility on your computer, which is available for both Windows and Mac, then you can turn the Z30 into a webcam. So you can use it as your streaming camera or just use it for your normal web video call. So that's super handy and the quality is just way better than the normal webcams. And next, let's talk about autofocus when shooting video. You have the usual face, eye tracking which works very well and very reliable and autofocus in general just works pretty well. It is responsive and reasonably smooth overall, at least with this kit lens. It may get slightly unreliable when shooting under very low light, but I'm talking about when you are shooting at almost five digits ISO, which to be fair, most cameras in the market would be the same. You could just leave the camera in full area AF mode, which is the mode I'm using right now to shoot this video, and the camera will work very well for most situation and it require no input from the user at all. Now, while the camera is mainly targeting video content creation, it is still a Nikon camera and the 21 megapixel sensor is more or less the same as the one on the ZFC. You can shoot up to 11 frames per second and you still have the very similar buttons and dial layout as the other Nikon Z camera. So it could still be a really capable photo camera. I did some image quality tests. I shot some photos in raw format from the base ISO all the way up to the maximum ISO. From the base ISO 100 to ISO 1600, the photos look very nice and there isn't really any noticeable difference in terms of image quality. At ISO 3200, you can start to see more noise, but I think up to ISO 6400, the image quality is still quite decent. At ISO 12800, we can see both color and contrast become noticeably worse, but the photos are still very usable even at ISO 25600. From ISO 51200 onwards, the image quality is quite poor and I will only use this ISO if I have no other way to decrease the ISO. I remember when the Nikon D3 and D700 came out, I was completely shocked by how good those full frame cameras high ISO image quality is and I bought a D700 for myself. But now this little APS-C Z30's maximum ISO is 8 times higher and the image quality at high ISO is also much better than those full frame cameras. It's really amazing how much the image sensor technology has improved over these years. 
And then I try to underexpose and overexpose the photos and see how much I can recover from the raw files. So here are the photos that I shot in my garden in the late afternoon with the sun visible in the frame and it is a pretty high contrast photo. So with the overexposed photos, I can recover the photos quite well even when the photo is two stops overexposed. Even the three stops overexposed photo still look quite good apart from the area that is right next to the sun. At four stops overexposed, then most of the highlight area cannot really be recovered. And now let's have a look at the underexposed photos. At one stop, two stops, or even three stops underexposed, they all look really good after I push the exposure back to normal in post-processing. Four stops and even five stops still look very decent. It's the six stops underexposed photo that you can see a bit of difference as there are quite a bit of noise in the shadow area after I push six stops during post-processing. But this is with no noise reduction applied in post-processing. So if I add a bit of noise reduction, then the six stops underexposed photo still look very usable. Now, of course, with the mirrors camera, which can show you the actual exposure in real time, no one would really underexpose or overexpose the photo that much. So this test is really just a test to see how good the raw files are from the Nikon Z30's APS-C sensor. And I think the result is pretty good. The biggest downside for photographers who want to use Z30 as a photo camera would be the lack of EVF. The LCD is good enough for most usage, but there are some certain scenario that I myself would definitely prefer to use a EVF. But then again, as I mentioned before, I'm an old school photographer that grew up with a viewfinder for taking photos. If you are from a younger generation, then the lack of EVF most likely wouldn't bother you at all. I've mentioned the word entry level many times in this review, and I purposely did that because I think one thing that is very important for a reviewer to do when reviewing a product is to understand what the product was designed for, who are the target users, and see whether it is really suitable for those users. For this Nikon Z30, it is a camera that is designed for vlogging, for video content creators, and it is targeting the entry-level market for people who want to capture better image quality than their smartphone, but they may not have extensive knowledge about photography or videography and just want something that is versatile and very easy to use just like their smartphone. And I think Nikon has delivered an almost perfect camera for that. You can leave the Z30 in fully auto mode, so auto exposure, auto area AF, and it is a very easy to use camera. And with features like the self portrait mode, the tele lamp, it makes the camera even more beginner friendly. And while it is not as compact as a smartphone, it is as small as you can get for a large APS-C sensor mirrors camera, especially with that 16 to 50 mm VR kit lens. Video and photo quality are good, very good, and definitely much better than what you can capture from a smartphone. The Z30 still has a quite traditional Nikon design. So for people like me who has been shooting with Nikon for many years, pick up the Z30 and it would feel very familiar. It has the twin control dials, a good number of customizable buttons. So it means there is quite a bit of room for beginner users to progress and get out of fully auto mode if they want. I said the Z30 is almost perfect because there's one thing that I really wish Nikon has included with the Z30 and that is the in-body image stabilizer or IBUS. I've mentioned the reasons earlier in this video so I'm not going to repeat myself again now. And yes, pretty much all the competitors also don't put a IBUS in the similar class camera. And I understand adding an IBUS would increase the cost and also the size of the camera a bit. But I think if Nikon does include an IBUS, it would make the Z30 really stand out from its competitors. And more importantly, it will also really benefit its target users. And it would become that perfect compact vlogging camera that still hasn't existed in the market yet. But anyway, apart from not having IBIS, I really don't find anything else that I could complain about the Z30. The Z30 is a very fun, 
very easy to use and very easy to carry around camera. So if you are thinking of starting to create some video contents and want to capture better video quality than your smartphone, this is definitely a camera you should consider and probably the best overall in the market right now.